Are you ready for something special? The Emirates Airbus E380 is among the most loved aircraft in the world. Millions of passengers worldwide pay a premium to fly with Emirates on their flagship aircraft. I've reviewed this plane in all cabins, but it's been three years since my last Emirates E380 economy class review. A lot can change in three years, especially with a global pandemic, so I was curious to see how the experience has held up. Is their economy class as good as before? Would I recommend Emirates over their competition? I actually have a pretty dramatic conclusion. Let's check it out, shall we? Let's go. I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who's been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past seven years, I've been lucky to call reviewing flights my job. And crazily enough, I just hit 500,000 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love and support over the years. I'll be doing more giveaways soon, so stay tuned. Today's video starts in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. I've spent the past week exploring my 83rd country of KSA. Meeting up and being shown around by several amazing members of Nonstop Nation who made my stay so memorable. Faisal, Keith, Casper, Kylie, and Ella, thank you so much. Once mine and Oscar's adventure was coming to a close, I was debating how to fly back to Dubai, where I'm now spending a few days catching up on work, aka YouTube. The cheapest options were Fly Nas or Fly Adil, two Saudi low-cost airlines. Emirates was about double the price of these other options, but considering the vastly superior experience and the included 30 kilos of checked baggage, meal, and seat selection, flying Emirates on their A380 no less is usually a no-brainer. Emirates flies twice daily between Dubai and Jeddah using the Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger aircraft on both frequencies. Despite the short flight, first business and economy class are offered on board. Not that the premium cabins are necessary on such a short flight. We got to Jeddah Airport around 9 a.m., returned our rental car to Saudi rental agency Lumi, who proceeded to royally scam us. That's the story for Oscar and Dan. Long story short, don't rent with them. The bad mood caused by that didn't last long since we soon entered the stunning new Terminal 1 at Jeddah King Abdulaziz International Airport. There was no line for check-in, so we picked up our boarding passes and were through security and immigration within 10 minutes. To my surprise, passengers then have to take a train to all gates, which seems like a strange way to build a new terminal. The train was like a roller coaster, going up and down, reaching speeds that made me think I was on Shinkansen. We soon made it out though and headed over to the Plaza Premium Lounge for a quick bite. So this has been our go-to snack in Saudi. If you haven't tried them, they're delicious. So I'm very pleased to see they have them in the lounge, although I was planning on leaving them behind me once we left here because <laughs> not the best thing to eat all the time. <laughs> they also had one of my favorite drinks besides lemon mint and bubble tea, Arabic coffee, or as we now have to call it by royal decree, Saudi coffee. Wow, this is one of the best we've had. And... <laughs> Good, but hard. It's quite dried. <laughs> After literally three minutes in the lounge, it was time to head to the gate. Every time I see an A380, it's just as breathtaking as the first time. This aircraft is just so massive. One of these A380s is currently worth an insane 115 million US dollars. So here's a question. How many A380s could you buy with the US credit card debt? The answer is 6,060. 
In fact, the average American carries a revolving credit balance of over $6,000 and incurs interest on the outstanding amount every month, the average of which is almost 15%. This not only costs people a fortune, but it severely harms their credit score, which is the primary tool used by lenders to evaluate whether or not you can get a loan for things like a house, a car, or your child's education. That is where today's video sponsor, Upstart, comes to the rescue. Whether it's paying off credit card debt, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in just five minutes for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. You can learn more at upstart.com slash nonstop or by clicking the link at the top of the description. That's upstart.com slash nonstop. So Emirates has a total of 120 A380s in its fleet making them by far the largest A380 operator. They have three configurations, one with first class, one without first class, and one with first class and premium economy. Today, I was on the most common configuration with first class, but no premium economy. This means that the upper deck is completely occupied by first and business class, while the lower deck has an incredible all economy layout with between 400 and 430 seats. There are so many great places to sit here, including extra legroom seats like this, which would be my choice for a long haul flight. They cost extra, but are worth it since you can work without someone reclining onto you. I chose 79k in the last row of the second last cabin. As you're about to see, you might want to avoid all K seats though. If you want an exact preview of your seat, Emirates has this amazing feature on their website that lets you preview your seat when you're choosing it. It's amazingly accurate. On that note, let's Let's board. I'm giddy with excitement to be flying an A380 again. Welcome on board the Emirates Airbus A380 lower deck. The cabin is spread out in a 343 configuration, so unfortunately there are a lot of middle seats. Still, in my opinion, Emirates has the most calming cabin colors in the world. These warm sand tones make you feel like you've stepped right into the desert. More importantly, the seats are comfortable. They have adjustable headrests that are so helpful for sleep. In addition, the body of the seat sort of cradles your back with its slightly raised edges. Emirates puts a lot of thought into the details of its cabins, from the faux wood finishes on the windows to the sand dunes on the bulkhead. This theme continues into the lavatories, which are insane for economy class. They're spacious, feel fancy, and even feature some body lotion and eau de toilette. The best feature of all is back at the seats. People boarding Emirates often let out oohs and ahs as they see how incredibly high tech and modern these seats are. The seat features among the world's biggest economy class screens. It's the size of an iPad. You can do almost anything you can imagine on Emirates ICE entertainment system. They have the world's most extensive selection of entertainment. Despite that, I always choose the same two shows, Bob's Burgers and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Ironic with so much to choose from. They also have three different exterior cameras, which you've gotta love, but maybe not as much when some shady bird decides to obstruct the view by literally doing its business right on the camera. Besides the entertainment, the seat back has plenty of other high-tech features. Each seat has at least one USB port for charging. However, some also feature a power port, which is so valuable. Sadly, there are only two power ports per three seats. So while passengers sitting in the A window seats on the left side of the cabin have them, all K seats are missing them, which could be a problem on a full flight. So I thought it might be good for you to know about this when you choose seats. The tray table design is also super smart and folds out to be quite large without taking up space when closed, which gives you more legroom. The sense of space here between the generous legroom and the airy A380 cabin is virtually unparalleled. The seat 
pocket, importantly, has two pockets so you can keep a little more organized. Which is pretty helpful for me because I tend to unpack my entire carry-on because I don't want to get up to the overhead lockers to get things during the flight. Since boarding was pretty slow, I asked two crew members for a quick picture to get a good thumbnail. Hashtag only YouTuber things. A few minutes later, one of them came by saying, I bet you want a Polaroid too. How sweet. Emirates provides free Polaroids on request to all passengers, including those in economy class. It's such a nice souvenir and great marketing. Shortly thereafter, the crew handed out hand sanitizer and a free mask to everyone on board. Extra points for Emirates. Now, something I wish every airline had. Individual air vents at the seat so you can control the temperature. In case you need to adjust, you have the option. مرحبا بكم على متن هذه الرحلة نرجو منكم الانتباه الكامل بينما نعرض لكم تعليمات السلامة على متن رحلة طيران الإمارات With that, let's leave Saudi Arabia for a two and a half hour journey to the world's busiest international airport namely Dubai As we take off, I'd like to congratulate this subscriber on winning a $100 gift card with an airline of their choice. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and you'll be automatically entered to win all types of awesome flight related prizes in every single video. As I mentioned earlier, the perk of sitting in the last row is that you can recline the entire flight without bothering anyone. So I immediately reclined after takeoff. The recline is decent, but nothing mind blowing. As is the norm these days, the seat moves forward when you recline, which makes legroom worse in order to create the illusion of a greater degree of recline. You won't have much trouble getting comfy even on short flights though, since all passengers get plush pillows. Blankets are also available on request. At the Emirates Pavilion at Dubai Expo last month, I learned that these blankets are made from water bottles, which is pretty freaking cool. They also offer free headphones, which are great as far as economy class headphones go. I often get this question. Sadly, no, you're not allowed to take these home as the crew collect them prior to landing. After about 50 minutes, the meal service began. Yes, there is a full meal service that's virtually identical to longer flights even on such a short route. You can even see a menu. Did you really think I'd review this flight if we didn't get the full Emirates experience? Not only is there a meal, but I consistently find that Emirates has the best portion sizes. I eat a lot, so this is invaluable to me. My pre-ordered vegan meal consisted of, I'm assuming, some kind of Chinese-inspired vegetable and rice dish, although the dominant flavor was tomato sauce. Far from the best meal I've had in Emirates economy class, but still not bad. What I love is all the accompanying dishes they offer, including vegan cheese, crackers, bread, and most impressively, two healthy sides of a bean salad and a coconut chia pudding. They also have metal cutlery. I enjoyed my meal with some delicious mango juice. Overall, a good dining experience, but truly insane for a flight under three hours. At this point, we were approaching the so-called empty quarter. Talk about a mysterious and enticing place, both name-wise and from above. As we cruised over the east of Saudi Arabia, I did a little work and checked the Wi-Fi pricing. $13 for unlimited data is excellent. 
Unfortunately for my work, the Emirates in-flight map is a little too distracting because it's just so good. Check out this view. Out the window, we were catching other breathtaking views of one of my and Oscar's favorite countries on Earth, Oman. Being owned by the Emirate of Dubai, Emirates plays all types of promotional videos to encourage tourism, and my goodness, these videos are so visually appealing. After two episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm and a whole lot of staring at the map, thanks ICE for resulting in little to no productivity, we were starting to see the first settlements in over an hour. Soon enough, we were approaching Dubai. On that note, I don't think I have a lot to say. Emirates delivers one of the world's best economy class experiences on its A380 for flights both long and short. You really can't go wrong. And here is my dramatic conclusion for you. Emirates economy class is far better value for money than almost all European airlines in business class. Assuming the price of economy class was about one third of the price for a European airline in business class, I would much rather save money and fly Emirates economy. In my opinion, it's almost impossible to get better value for money when paying for a cash ticket. So in conclusion, Emirates still delivers. Shukran masalama, and I can't wait to see you all for my next self-funded review or analysis video. Until then, fly safe.